going on guys? Wanted to make a video tonight and show you uh, more or less the finished work table or work rest assembly, uh, at least for the flat platen. Now uh, this probably isn't going to work the same way for the small wheel arm or the 8 inch contact wheel. And uh, just to give you a quick visual on why that is, uh, obviously this flat platen has a lot of surface area you know, to take up a lot of the 72 inches of belt. And because of that, uh, this tool arm actually goes further into the body of the grinder uh, than the small wheel arm would. And uh, to get the same tension and to take up that extra slack on a much smaller surface area like the small wheel, uh, you'd have to pull the arm out, you know, quite a bit further, uh, maybe an extra four or five inches, uh, give or take, depending on the diameter of your wheel. And uh, because of that, obviously, to get your tool arm out in front of this wheel, then, uh, for your work rest, you'd have to uh, pull it out an additional four to five inches. And uh, currently, there just simply isn't enough tool arm to do that. Now, I could make a longer tool arm. You know, I could make these about two feet long. That's probably what it would take to comfortably uh, get in front of that small wheel or even the eight-inch contact wheel, which is a little bit smaller than the platen and uh, sticks out further. Uh, you know, I can make a two foot tool arm, but uh, that poses a couple of issues. For one, you know, I don't have limitless real estate in these tool slots. Uh, you know, the bottom two, you're eventually gonna hit the motor. Uh, the top two, you'll eventually hit the gas spring or the over center cam assembly. So uh, right now at about 18 inches, I think that's a perfect length uh, for this flat platen. I can come out as far as I need to. I can go in as far as I need to uh, for certain other uh, applications and you know that seems to be just fine. Now uh, what I think I'm going to do to address that issue on the other tool arms is let me take this out real quickly to give you a better visual there. <clears throat> uh, kind of make a secondary uh, you know tool arm holder uh, on the, or the you know round bar holder on the tool arms themselves. And uh, what I can then do is have like a secondary work rest bar. You know, this will be drilled out and uh, have a locking handle on it to accept another piece of round bar. So that'll go on underneath here like so. You know, imagining your small wheel or your contact wheel there. And uh, then, you know, with that locked into the tool arm itself, I can have another piece of round bar or really just use this one you know to insert that in the front there and have a tool rest uh, socket or adapter there as well so uh, I'm gonna kind of play with those ideas a little bit obviously it'll need to be a lot longer than this but uh, I don't think it'll be as long as the 18 inch uh, tool arm but it uh, certainly won't be two feet long either and I think that'll kind of be the best solution for you know, the grinder setup in general. Now, uh, if that didn't make sense to you the way I explained it, uh, I apologize. Uh, it'll make a lot more sense in a future video. I'll show you how I work that in. I uh, still need to actually mount my wheels and my small wheel to another tool arm. Uh, this is my no-weld grinder socket arm, and uh, it's not really set up to track on this one. So uh, that'll be another video, hopefully I didn't confuse everybody, but uh, it'll make sense in the future. Now uh, I can't show you this setup though, and I know I kind of went over some of this last night. And uh, before I get into this too heavily, I will give credit to Chris Williams at Wilmot Grinders uh, for the main inspiration uh, behind this design. Uh, now I'm not trying to copy him exactly by any means, you know, I've made a few changes here and there. Uh, so hopefully there won't be any ruffled feathers. But uh, there's no denying some similarities and uh, the inspiration did come from him. Now, you know, I've seen similar setups on other grinders and it may be the same story for them as well. Uh, originally seeing Chris's setup and, you know, adjusting accordingly. But, uh, you know, there's no denying similarities there and I'd be remiss if I didn't give credit uh, where it's due. So, uh... Just want to put that out there now. Uh, here's kind of what we got. 
uh, you know, pretty versatile setup here. We can bottom that out. We're now in the third tool slot, so we have most of our flat platen available to us. You know, we could raise this up as needed if we needed a little bit more height, even yet. Get our uh, adjustable handle out of the way first. You know, these things are convenient until they kind of get in your way. But, uh, you know, we've got some additional height there. If we needed even more height, you know, whether lower or higher, we could just move our tool arms. You know, this way we'll have uh, pretty much the entire platen and even part of the uh, slack belt area there. And, uh, you know, if we wanted to go any lower than that, I don't really see what the purpose would be. But, you know, we do have room to angle things in. Go ahead and slide that in a little farther. You know, for sharpening, dovetailing, chamfering, things like that. Or, you know, we can go the other way. And actually, I would probably rotate this. I've got a 60 degree bevel on the back here, and uh, that'll allow you to inch up a little bit closer to the belt there. Uh, you know, for again, dovetailing, chamfering, uh, different applications like that. Now, as far as zeroing this back to 90, let's go ahead and put this back in our. lot here and I apologize if I'm working a little slow I'm still kind of figuring all this stuff out myself now what I really like about this system is right now I know that this table is essentially flat to the world uh, you know if I put a level on it it may be off based on my grinder stand obviously but uh, you know for the most part this is a repeatable 90 degree angle and now I could take an angle cube you know, set it on there, zero it, we're already at zero. And then put it on the back of my platen, uh, which is steel as well. And that's one of the main reasons, by the way, that I didn't go with aluminum. You know, it would have dissipated heat a little better. It's a much better heat sink. And, uh, you know, I probably had a little bit extra from the water jet cutting. But uh, I went with steel so that I could put this magnet on the back uh, for finding that 90 degree angle. And uh, we're already pretty close. Put that right there. And now we're uh, perfectly at 90 degrees. You know, every time we set up this table now, you know, where we go up with it, down with it, it'll be right at 90. Now, uh, unfortunately, you really can't swing this out of the way because of this quick handle. And uh, that's maybe one good reason to put it on the side there. That'll give you some more clearance. Uh, so I'll probably offer both options, you know, tapped from the front or the side. But uh, again, you got your height adjustment just how you need it. If you want to get up to the top of your flat platen, maybe do some grinding on your two inch wheel. You know, that'll get you most of the way. If for some reason you wanted to go even higher than that, Take our table out so we don't drop something. Just raise that up like so. And now we've got pretty much complete access to the top there. And uh, we can even go even higher than that uh, for whatever application that might be.